What's up guys, Nate here from The Run Experience. We are gonna talk about running shoe blisters. I'm gonna give you some ideas to focus on for your shoes. Is the lacing, are they too old? Is there something else going on there? As well as your mechanics. Is there something going on with how your foot's hitting the ground that's causing that blister to happen in the first place? So when it comes to running shoe blisters, we first need to ask a few questions. Where's the problem? Where's it occurring? Am I getting a blister under one of my toes? Am I getting a blister under the arch of my foot? Does it happen in the heel? Does it happen on the outside of the edge? Uh, this gives us valuable information of where to look. If we think about it, a blister is really just friction. My foot is sliding in that shoe in some way. Now let's get some of the, the easier fixable stuff out of the way first. Is there something going on with your shoes that's potentially causing the blister? A few things that come to mind might be the age of your shoes. We actually had a runner who was dealing with an injury over the winter and we asked all these questions, we exhausted ourselves and then we finally asked how old her shoes was and she said she'd been running in them for over a thousand miles and we're like, huh, maybe there's some connection there and we've exhausted everything else. So if your shoes are really old or they're really beat up, you might want to explore that. Uh, the other thing you want to look at is your lacing. Are you someone who ties your shoes exactly the same way? Have your laces loosened up? Have you tried a new lacing system? Has that caused your foot to slide around in the shoe more than it should? Definitely go ahead and check out there. As a general rule of thumb, I'm just going to pull my shoe off. Um, I don't do the best job because these are a little bit more kick around, but generally what we want to see is a, a lacing where I've got a little bit more of a, an anchor around the top of my foot and then the lacing down here is a little bit more loose. So you can actually see that they have these little extra holes here. What you can actually do is sort of like thread this through on either side and uh, create a little lace lock and that kind of keeps my the top of my foot locked in and, and this part a little bit looser. Uh, we can definitely go into a separate video on that. Um, so that would be another thing i check out. And then the other question I'd want to ask guys is, hey, where, put my shoe back on, as, uh, where is this occurring? Do you feel like it's happening more on downhills, uh, more on uphills? Did you just go on trails? Were you doing a long run and you were running on one side of the road on that little beveled edge and all of a sudden your foot was just sort of collapsing on one side all the way? That would be another thing to think about. Now, getting more specifically into that shoe, we wanna make sure you're in the right shoe for your foot. And a few issues I start to see is if your foot's, say, a little bit wider, and you're in a shoe that's a little bit narrow, and you can kind of feel that pinching on either side of your foot, that might be an issue right there. You could have a shoe that has too much arch support, or conversely, not enough arch support. I was running in a shoe the other day that was a little narrow, and it didn't have enough arch support, so it was actually collapsing my foot inwards. I felt like my feet were being pushed into the ground. Uh, and if you can kind of come down to see my feet real quick, um, basically the shoe was kind of forcing me to go this way, and all of a sudden I was starting to deal with some issues like that. So we want to start to ask these questions. We want to get ourselves into a shoe that's going to work with our foot as it should. We want to check the lacing, how old we are, the terrain that's happening. If we start to think about these questions, that really helps us get to the, the bottom of the matter. And the next piece, we're actually going to address your mechanics because guess what? You are in charge of really how you run and your uh, blisters. So we're going to give you some tips there. So my number one tip for mechanics when it relates to blisters are my ears, I gotta listen. And those of you who like to listen with your earbuds in all the time, fantastic. I like to podcast myself when I'm out on the, on the road or the trails or, or listen to some music to get me through that interval workout. But I gotta unplug every once in a while and listen to what's going on. And remember what we said in the first part, a lot of times blisters has to do with friction. My foot is literally sliding in the shoe. So if we think about this for a minute and we were to think about my foot, I'm gonna over exaggerate this. Basically what's happening is that my foot's hitting the ground and my foot is still sliding forward. And if I'm that person who's getting blisters up in their toes, what's happening? Probably my toes are jamming up into the front of the shoe, right? So maybe there's something that's there. And then same thing, maybe I'm someone who's landing a lot on the outside edge of their foot, the arch is too big and I'm being pushed out to the side. Maybe I'm getting a blister out here. 
whoops a daisy and then uh, maybe if I'm getting that arch support in here it's it's sort of a similar thing right so we could sort of think about where these are if I'm someone who's getting blisters on the heel hey maybe I'm sliding and hitting that heel and then I come down so think about that blister as a little truth checker for really where your foot's hitting the ground and what's going on the best thing we do is listen the next thing we start to do is assess our basic cadence count your steps for an entire minute and you see what this number is if we're thinking about how many my steps my foot hits the ground in one minute and i could count one two three four all the way we would start to look at numbers for most people in the average of say 75 to 80 on the low end upwards of 85 to 90 uh, to 95 plus on on the higher end chances are if your cadence is low and let's say let's kind of consistently below 85 steps per minute on one side that foot is staying on the ground too long there's excessive friction and the longer my foot's on the ground the greater the impact the more likely it's going to collapse in some powerful way so those are the things I want to think about listen to my feet focus on my cadence we've got other great cadence videos on our channel that talk you about exactly how you can improve that but that's how we go to tackle this issue Guys, one more thing. Uh, we have put together a two-week running strength and injury prevention program for you. Really easy, tangible tips that you can do at home that's going to make a big difference in terms of how your body feels, uh, getting rid of those achy knees or those hips, uh, figuring out how to run a little bit lighter down the road, and how to get a little bit stronger to boot. Uh, all you need to do to get it is to click this link up in this video. If you, uh, There's also a link down in the description if you want to go ahead and grab that too. Uh, definitely like this video if you did let us know we always like to know that uh, drop a comment down below as well if you have any questions and what we talked about or any requests for future videos and definitely subscribe to our channel we got so much great stuff coming out each and every week to help you and your running once again Nate here thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next video